Thank you so much for tuning in to Awakening with Katina Love. We are a conscious channel to learn about self-empowerment, the law of attraction, metaphysics, creating financial abundance and natural health. Please like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Awakening with Katina Love. Today, our special guest is Ava, Ava Laura Gaither, life coach, intuitive consultant, and keynote speaker. Today, we're going to talk about her spiritual awakening journey and dream interpretation. Hello, Ava Laura. How are you? I'm wonderful, Katina. How are you? I am awesome. I am so awesome. Thank so, you so much for having me. You are welcome. Absolutely. So we've been friends on Facebook for a little bit. And recently, I've been noticing your different posts, the different um, programs that you're doing and the speaking engagements. And it just caught my eye. I'm just so happy to see other like-minded people who are making a difference in the world and raising the consciousness on the planet to help people become their best version. So I am just so delighted to connect with you today and talk about what you have going on, hear about your story and how you got started. And again, it's just such a beautiful thing to connect with other like-minded people who are making a difference. I appreciate that. Thank you. You are welcome. So what started you on your spiritual awakening journey? You know, I mean, that's a really interesting question because there wasn't, you know, one thing I would say, mm -hmm. right? It, it's, it's, you know, anybody who is, I would consider awakened being, a spiritual being, a conscious being on this, on this healing journey or on the search for living our best life, like everybody's talking about right now, um, you recognize that things happen in your life at certain periods of time and that the journey always continues. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, something could happen to you in 1998 and then something can happen to you again in 2000 and right. 2010 and so on and so forth. And if you're continuing to do your work, that is how it evolves and changes over time. Absolutely. I, I totally understand. So um, you want to just kind of share like your background. Like for me, I, I did start out in the church. You know, I started, I was raised in a Baptist church and then I went Pentecostal and then mm -hmm. later in life, you know, I just put that question out there. What else is there? You know, I just had kind of graduated from, I had gotten as far as I could have got grown within the, you know, traditional religion. And so one day I just, I just put the question out there, you know, what else is there? And then I consciously started awakening, you know, consciously started, you know, opening my mind up to all the other possibilities and all the other things that we weren't taught, you know, <laughs> as far as consciousness and, you know, self-empowerment and, you know, how we create our own reality and, you know, how science and spirituality go together and all of that. So, you know, I just, I was just kind of curious you know, how, like, at what point did you realize that there's, like, more to what we've been told, you know, and, and mm -hmm. in the media and in the traditional religion? <laughs> yeah, you know, I think that that definitely happened in, in phases as well for me. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a very spiritual being by nature. That That is who I am. And it was something that I was always very aware of, even as a child. Um, I would have experiences and things that I couldn't quite put into words, didn't really understand, but I did know that I was different, mm -hmm. you know, or mm -hmm. that I was always very sort of connected spiritually and always a firm believer in God and faith and all these things. But I absolutely hated church. <laughs> I, could not, I, know, right? <laughs> I could not stand going to church. And I would have, you know. I would have knocked down, dragged out fights with my father who, uh -huh. you know, actually now is a minister, but he was not when I was growing up. So I was not a preacher's kid, but my parents and actually my family, very Christian family. My parents were always very active in the church. My father was a trustee for many years and my, my mother served. And so, you know, their thing is you go to church. That's just what you do. You right. know, my grandfather was a minister. My, my grandmother was like the, you know, the late, you know, the, they called her like the, um, the, the the um the cake lady at church you know mm -hmm. cake lady and fried chicken like they they were known <laughs> like they were like pillars you right. know what I mean the 
the church and the community. So that was just something that my father grew up on. That's just expected. Like you go to church and who are you to say, no, you don't want to go. Like you, you can't do that. Of course. So Only you, you I did. To go. Yeah. Well, right. I was, yeah. I was the rebel and I was just like, no, I don't, I don't like church and I'm just not going to go. And so we would have fights, you know, almost every Sunday we would have fights and sometimes he won, sometimes I won. And (laughs) um, eventually, um, at some point, I just stopped going to church because I would tell him, I'm like, dad, you know, they're lying. Like, they're not telling us the truth. Like, I may not know exactly what the truth is, but I know that they're not telling it. Right. I know the same I get, I get it, you know, and it's like, I, like I said, it's like you get so far, like at my old church coming up, they only preach, the pastor only preached about the Old Testament. And I'm like, come on now, I talked to my other friends and their, their pastor preached about the, about the New Testament and the Old Testament. But I'm like, come on now, that is, that was so long ago. And I knew that in my like early 20s, I knew that, I'm like, come on now, this is like so old, even as a teenager. I knew that because I had left the church from age 15, I stopped going. I wasn't, you know, my mom didn't make me go anymore. So from 15 to like 26, and then at 26, I went back because I was in a different mindset. I was actually searching Mm -hmm. after Mm -hmm. the heart of God. I literally wanted to know the heart of God. Mm -hmm. And so I went back for a year. And then after that year, it was like, okay. I mean, that's it here. And they're still teaching about the Old Testament. So I went and started going to other churches and mm-hmm. I went to a Pentecostal church. That's where I learned about faith. You know, I will give credit to that, that faith is just an amazing thing. I wasn't taught that growing up. I was 27 when, or 26 when I learned about faith, like literally, like how to have faith, how to trust God and, you know, step out on faith and all of that. So, you know, church does have it play, his place, but there came a time when you know, and I'm grateful for all the teachings I got. But for me, there was a time I'm like, come on, this, I'm done. <laughs> mm-hmm. And that's when I started learning about the law of attraction. And then I learned about the secret. And then I learned about, you know, it just opened up a whole new world for me, you know, astrology, numerology. And I got, you know, I just started learning about all these other things that are out there. So, you know, be careful what you ask for, because, you know, once you open your mind up, then spirit will bring you you know what you're ready for so i can i can totally relate to that yeah the rap so, the rabbit hole goes deep thing. and 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 you know you know I, I certainly had a similar journey in that i was always very much a seeker because i was a very spiritual person i was not anti god i was not anti spirit i just did not find it in the church for me right. and so but it was still important to me so i needed to find it somewhere else yeah. Um, so I was always on that journey. And for me, it actually started in college when I went to Howard University. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually, that's when I first learned about uh, yoga and meditation. And, and, and I think that's really, you know, it, sort of interesting in the sense that yoga is big now. But back then, we're talking about in the 90s. Yoga mm-hmm. was not big. Meditation was not big, especially not in the black community. Right. That's absolutely true. And, you know, yeah. So that's where I first got exposed to it. And then what happened was when I graduated from Howard and I went out and I was looking for, you know, going to different yoga studios, I found that it was not the same yoga that I had learned. Like the spiritual part of it was missing. Mm -hmm. And it was just about do downward dog, do upward dog, do child's (laughs) pose. I'm like, well, where's the meditation? Where's the breath work? You know what I mean? Where, where's the spiritual aspect of it? It was, it was devoid of that. It was, it was Westernized yoga as I call it. Um, and so that left me on another journey. And then of course, going into my work, um, just having my background in social work and psychology and working within the social work system, and then realizing that there were so many limitations and I was not able to really help people heal and to grow and to change, but I was really just helping people to maintain their dysfunction. <laughs> I understand. You I'm know, laughing, and but I, I get it. You know, I'm not laughing at the, you know, the issues that people have. I'm just saying, I totally get it. I totally understand, and I, I know that that's right. 
So it was like, for me, they all sort of converged together. It's like, here I am having this career crisis in the sense that, you know, I did all this work. I got my bachelor's degree in psychology, master's degree in social work, and I'm coming out here to heal and save the world. And I can't do that within this limited system. And then here I am also trying to find myself and connect spiritually and searching and seeking. So it was sort of all happening together. And so what happened is for me, um, you know, sort of long story short of it, of my, I was a program director at an outpatient mental health clinic. Mm-hmm. And I just found myself getting very depressed and getting very um, stagnant and feeling like I was not making a difference. I was not making an impact. I could not change the world within that system. And I did not know what to do. Well, here I am a social worker and I'm, you know, and I'm working with kids and I'm working with adults and I'm, you know, counseling but I needed counseling myself you know Mm -hmm. and um and so one of my friends suggested that I go on this woman's retreat and I and I did at that point I just didn't care I was just like whatever I'll go and that got me back to the soulful self-care that I teach a lot about now that's when I got back to doing yoga doing meditation Mm -hmm. um spending time with like minds being in nature praying and what happened for me is I literally had this emotional breakdown that I found my knee, myself on my hands and knees, praying, calling out to God, saying, I can't live like this anymore. I'm not living. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just existing here. I'm not living. I can't do this. Like, you've got to get me out. I cannot do this anymore. Mm-hmm. And that, you know, that was my reality. And I'm here I am and on this retreat, my hands and knees crying, boohooing, the mm-hmm. ugly cry, the whole nine. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and I felt good. I let it all out. Oh and God. it was like, mm-hmm. wow, okay, I feel better. That was, of course, until I realized I had to go back to work on Monday morning, mm-hmm. go back into the, the rat, rat race and, and, you know, and just going back to the, what this, you know, what my life had become. And what this, you know, what going to that retreat helped me realize that I was not really, I was not fully living. Mm -hmm. I I wasn't happy. I wasn't laughing, you know, like all these parts of myself, I I realized that, you know, I was so caught up in my reality of being miserable and feeling stuck and being depressed that I was not happy. I was not even me anymore. And it was, it was just this really, you know, sort of this, this phase of like, what am I going to do? Like, I can't do this anymore. And um, so what happened for me actually is that when I went back to work on Monday morning, essentially my boss calls me into his office. He sits me down and he said, Abe, Laura, it's been great having you, but I have to let you go. I understand. And I said, wait, what? No, I did not understand. <laughs> not then. I was like, oh no, no, wait, what? You know, ego Mm -hmm. kicked in. Ego was having a fit. Like, how dare you? I cannot believe you're going to fire me. Mm -hmm. I've never been fired from anything in my life. Like, here I am, graduated magna cum laude. You know what I mean? Five beta captain. Like, like me, you're going to fire me? Right, Um, right. But then spirit kicked in. Like, Ava Laura, why are you complaining? Why are you upset? Right. This is what you prayed for. So what are you going to do about it? Right. That became my mission. What am I going to do about it? You know, am I going to take the blue pill? Am I going to just go back into the social work fields right. and get another job? Cause th- this is not, e- that's not hard. I got a master's degree. I'm, I'm licensed. Am I mm-hmm. going to go out here and just get another job and, and, you know, do the whole status quo, be in this limited system, or am I going to take that red pill? Am I going to find myself? Am I going to do the work in my own way that I know will benefit and help people heal and sort of take that faith walk. Right. Um, right. That's and, what it that's, is. and that's what I, I chose to do. I chose to take that faith walk. I chose to venture into the path of the unknown. And so during that time, I took what I call my six month healing sabbatical. Mm-hmm. And that's really where I did the work. Who am I? Mm-hmm. You know, I got the coaching, mm-hmm. I got the counseling. I just when I did my Reiki training, learned Reiki, and now you know I'm a Reiki master teacher. And, you know that's when I learned about more about yoga, meditation, aromatherapy, hypnotherapy. I just delved into all aspects of spirituality, healing, all of those different things. And so it was it, they kind of just came together in me trying to find myself career wise and what I wanted to do and mm-hmm. how I wanted to help people and what is it that I can do that nobody else can do and how can I truly contribute to the world and help people. And then also me, of course, finding myself spiritually and being connected and grounded and rooted. Yeah. Um, 
So it was a really beautiful journey. And at the end of that six months, I opened up Ava Laura's Healing Center. And that was in November of 2005. So that was about 13 years ago now. And it, it's been this really beautiful place of providing this safe space, if you will, this oasis of healing for my clients who a lot were just like me that, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. they've achieved some level of success, but mm -hmm. they're not happy. Right. You know, I got the degrees. I did what everybody told me to do. I got married. I got kids. I, you know, I got the house. I got the right. dog. You know, I got all these things, but I'm not happy. I'm not fulfilled. And I'm trying to figure out who, who I am or, mm -hmm. you know, I'm a doctor, but I really just want to be a writer and travel the world. Right. Like I'm trying to figure right. all this out or I don't know what my purpose is and I'm still trying to figure that out or I'm having these problems in my relationships or, you know, somewhere or I'm trying to launch this business and I can't quite figure this out. So it's been this really beautiful journey of taking all the things that I've learned and experienced and helping other people now to, you know, quote unquote, live fully and live their best life. And a lot of that does, you know, kind of contain the spiritual journey that we're talking about, finding ourselves spiritually, because a lot of times people aren't grounded and rooted spiritually. Right, right. That is so absolutely true. That is so true. That That's amazing. You, you are, you've done a lot of stuff. And like I said, it's, you know, we need people like you on the planet that's going to help people shift their mindset and to realize that we are not here to do do what other people are doing. We're not here to, you know, please our parents or to, you know, to make them happy. It's about what, it, what's making you happy and what's your life's purpose. So, yeah. you know, it's, it's a beautiful thing that you're here to help people to discover that. That's, that's awesome. You know, so, like you say, God don't make no mistakes, right? Like, not at it, all. I had to have that experience happen so that when people come to me, I can help them. Yep, and so that you can totally, totally relate. And be like, you know, I've already walked down that path. I, yes. I can <laughs> totally, that, <laughs> I can totally relate to what you're going through. You know, we need more coaches on the planet who are doing what you're doing and what I'm doing, and so that we can all you know, we're just all here to help each other and to help people to remember who they really are. Because yeah. like you said, most people took that blue pill. Yeah, absolutely. You know, yep. so now let's talk about dream interpretation. That, that is such a fascinating subject. And, you know, a lot of people want to know, like, what are dreams? Where do they come from? <laughs> so I wanted to get your take on that. What, what do you, what's your interpretation of dreams? Yeah, so I know people are probably like, well, wait, how are we talking about dreams? Like, she does all this work, right? Right. Um, but so what's really interesting about dreams for me is that, again, like I said, my background is in psychology. So mm -hmm. I studied psychology undergrad, and then I studied social work. I got my master's degree in social work. And when you learn psychology, for anybody who studied um you know, psych, whether it's undergrad or in graduate school, you learn about the mind, you learn about Freud, you learn about Jung, you learn, you learn a little bit about dreams, not a lot, mm -hmm. but you learn, you know, you're, you're taught that dreams are a function of the subconscious, right? Right. Or when we're talking about Freud, you know, like the id or, you know, things like that. So usually sort of like the suppressed um, aspect of our, of our minds. That, so that, that's a lot of what is taught out in the, you know, um, in the psych world. Mm -hmm. And, and again, remember me saying I've always been a spiritual being. So when I went through the process of trying to find myself and, and reconnecting with myself, dreams is one of the things that I started to learn from my spiritual teacher. And I've always been a big dreamer. I'm a Pisces. Mm -hmm. I can relate. I'm a big if dreamer too. <laughs> about Pisces, water energy. We are known for yeah. being the most spiritual yeah. um, of the zodiac. Um, we, you know, we are dreamers. We live in the spirit world. Like spirit. Yeah. Pisces who are not who are not grounded spiritually are scary. I'm gonna just tell you. Like we we need <laughs> like our food. Like if we don't have some sort of spiritual practice groundedness, we are scary. Um, mm -hmm. 
So I'm, I'm not going, you know, everybody I think needs that, but I, in particular, Pisces water signs is important. So for me, I've always been a dreamer, but I did not understand dreams. I sort of looked at it from the westernized context, like, you know, Freud and Jung and all of that, because that, that is what I learned. Mm -hmm. And so after going through this journey and meeting my spiritual teacher, and that is a whole nother story that I'm not even going to get into right now, <laughs> um, but, it, but it happened after I went to India and learned, um, I did my yoga teacher training in India. And mm -hmm. after I came back from that, I met my spiritual teacher here and I learned all about the actual real reality of dreams. Wow. So I say all of that to say that I got like the Western part of it. Mm -hmm. And then I got like the spiritual part of it. And, you know, I think that there's so many different misconceptions about dreams. And a lot of it is because we, when we learn about dreams, when you Google and you look up your dream symbols, or you buy a book about dream symbols, or even if you see somebody like on Dr. Phil or Dr. Oz, I'll see them have experts talking about dreams. They have absolutely no idea what they're talking about. They're coming from the Western aspect. Right. And right. if all you do is try to interpret dreams from that aspect, it's going to be wrong every single time. I get it. When you go on Google and you're looking up dream symbols, because you're like, I don't want to pay anybody to do this, because that's what most people do. Right. You're getting the wrong information. I'm just going to tell you right now, you're not getting the spiritual. And if you know anything about dreams, you know that dreams are spiritual in nature. Mm -hmm. they are. And you don't even have to take my, my, you know, my view of that. If, if you go to anybody's Bible, mm -hmm. anybody's Quran, any spiritual, they're going to talk about dreams. Right think about that this supersedes psychology this supersedes freud and young and what we know about the mind this was talked about in the bible from the beginning of time right it is so it is if you try to approach dreams from this western way you're missing the whole point because dreams are spiritual in nature they really are they really are and so that's like one of the biggest things that I have to tell people, like when we think about dreams, we have to shift our mindset about them. Dreams are spiritual. It is, you know, it's like God's way of talking to you. God is not going to come down from the sky and talk to you. That's not going to happen. <laughs> right. Okay. It's not going to be like the movies. Where you have this big booming voice. Morgan Freeman is not going to come and talk to you and say, right. Ava Laura, you need to do this. <laughs> that doesn't happen. God works through people. God yeah. works through signs. God yeah. works through dreams. Yeah, that is so absolutely true. So what's your take on the different types of dreams that we have? Whether it's uh, a nightmare, whether it's something we've been thinking about, whether it's something we're looking for an answer to, perhaps? Yes. So there's actually three types of dreams. And you can call them whatever you want, you know, different sort of schools of thought may call them different things, but there are three types of dreams. Okay. The first one is what you will call the holy dream. And that's what I'm talking about. That comes from spirit. So that is, you know, like you, maybe you prayed for information or you prayed for something and the inform and the, the information is coming through your dream. So maybe you didn't pray for anything, but it's something important. And so the dream is coming to you as a warning or it's coming to you as important information, something that you need to know about. You know, these are dreams like, you know, oh, um, I had a dream about this, so-and-so was pregnant. You know, right, so it could be right, information right. about things or it could be a warning. So that is your, what we would call a holy dream. Then you have what we would call like the evil and satanic dreams. And that could be like, that would be a night, that would be considered a nightmare. Uh -huh. That would be considered literally that they're dreams that come from evil spirits. So you got your good spirits and then okay. you got your evil spirits, right? I'm not going to go into the whole, you know, I'm just keeping right, it simple. Right. But you got good, you got evil, you got light, you got dark. Right. So, um, so those would be your nightmares. So when we're looking at dreams, obviously the most important ones are the holy dreams. Nightmares sometimes can be important too, because even though they're evil, they still know stuff. They're still coming from spirit, <laughs> right? You know, um, but it's just like, it's bad delivery. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. It might be true. The delivery sucks so. though. I get it. I get it. <laughs> so um, they could be important. And then the last one, which is the least important is what we would call like brain picturing or your, um, your mental dreams. And so these would be the dreams that sort of psychology talks a lot about and that they're coming from your mind. 
I get it. When I do a dream interpretation, I'm not even I'm not even concerned about those dreams. Those dreams are not even important because our minds are limited. Like we don't know. So a lot of times it can be the dreams like you went to sleep and you were watching, I don't know, Twilight. You were watching, what do, what do people watch right now? You were watching Empire or, you know what I mean? The some some show, your favorite show, This Is Us. Everybody's watching This Is there's, there's a lot of shows out there right now. So you're watching your favorite show and you go to sleep or you're reading your favorite book and you go to sleep and you actually maybe have like characters, you know, Lucia's line comes to you in your sleep and you're like, yo, I <laughs> you know what I'm saying? like, and you thinking it's something important and it's not, it's just that you went to sleep after watching right. Empire yeah. and now he's coming to you in your sleep. Exactly. Totally. I get it. I totally get it. So the first thing about dream interpretation, like you want to understand the three types and know that there are types that are more important and you always want to get the holy dreams, the spiritual dreams. You always, always, always want to get those interpreted, especially if they're reoccurring. I see. I see. Reoccurring means that they come, it comes to you more than once. It may not necessarily be the same dream all the time, but maybe it's the same thing. And that could happen every day, every other day. It could be once every year, you know, any number of times. But if you have the same dream more than once or the same theme of dream more than once, that is a reoccurring dream is important and you absolutely want to get that interpreted. Cool. So let's talk about your dream interpretation course. So my course is really all about breaking down those three types of dreams. And more importantly, what my course does, which is what a lot of courses don't do, which I have not seen, mm -hmm. is that it really breaks down the language of dreams. Okay. Understanding that dreams is another language. Dreams are mostly symbolic. Right, you might have right. some dreams that are just straight dreams that whatever you dreamed about is exactly what it is. But for the most part, dreams are symbolic. So mm -hmm. if you don't know the dream language, you can't figure out how to interpret your dream. Mm, okay. So, I so I'll, give you an, I'll give you an example. Like, for instance, talking about another language, if you learn French, right? There's some words in French that are the same words as, as English but they have totally different meanings. Mm -hmm. So if you say we, right, in English, that means, you know, me and Katina, mm -hmm. you know, me and my mama, me and my mm -hmm. sister, you know, like it's, it's more than one, me and someone else, we. Right. But if you say we in French, it means yes. Oh. Totally different meaning. So if I am an American and I speak English and I think we, I have a totally different perspective of what we is versus if I am French from France, I'm thinking, yes. yes. Right. Wow. So if you don't know that language, right. you're not going to know the meaning. Your, your, mean, your, your interpretation of the dream is going to be completely off. Right. Wow. That's amazing. And most people don't understand that. So what we do is we see something in a dream and we think is exactly as we see it. Right. We don't understand right. that there's a symbolic language. So if I see, I'll give you an example. We see a car in a dream. You think, oh, maybe I'm going to get a new car right. or maybe something's wrong with my car or you know what I mean? Like we, that's right. what we think, but a car has nothing to do in a dream. A car is not a car. It is a different language. If you right. see a dream in a car, it's representation of a relationship. Oh. It has okay. nothing to do with a car. Hmm. But these are the things that you're not going to learn. Trust me, go to Google. It's not going to tell you that. Right. Of course not. <laughs> Google is not God. Google doesn't know this information. That's Sorry. That's right. You're not going to find this on YouTube. Sorry. That is <laughs> like you so just... <laughs> like, I try to tell people. They're like, well, what book? There is no book. Um, that's why I created this course because this information is not in books, is not online, is not you you can't find it. The only reason that I know this information is because I have studied with a spiritual teacher for over 10 years now. That's wow. the only reason I know this information and the fact that I am a dreamer. There's certain things that I've right. learned. Right. 
That's the only reason I can tell you this information. Personal experience. Not because I studied it. It, it does not exist. Wow, amazing. So you have your dream interpretation course. What other type of courses do you offer? I have so many, so many different types of courses, but you know, really the work that I do is all about helping people, like you said, to one, really discover who you are in your unique beingness and be able to live from that place and be happy with whatever the life is that you choose to live. I'm not one for judgment. I don't, you know, what you do is what you do, but it's about, you know, is this what you want? Is this how you want? Want to live? Right. Are you living on your own terms or are you living on someone else's terms? Right, right. When you pick up the dream interpretation course, it's telling you all about your dreams so that you can now understand the information that's coming to you. You can pay me to interpret your dreams for, for you, and I appreciate that. Or you can take the course and you can learn how to do it yourself so that when signs and symbols and things come to you, you will have that information so you're living in alignment and harmony with who you are. Yeah, which is so important so absolutely important absolutely. so that that's really what it's about for me then it's of course i teach reiki uh so i do have a distance reiki course as well as i teach it live here in the dc area um I, and i teach reiki one two in the master's training um so that's really important and again that's all about helping you to you know one a lot of my clients help to tap into their healing gifts and their abilities yeah. um for people who know their healers but also i also recommend it for empaths because um, empaths are very sensitive to energy and we have to know how to protect our energy. That's true. Absolutely. And if we don't, we get bombarded, we get sick, um, we get overwhelmed, you know, so many different things happen. And so in Reiki, I teach my students how to protect their energy. Yeah. Which is so important. That's so really key. important. Yeah. So yes, you learn Reiki. Yes, you can learn how to perform it on yourself and other people. And, you know, you can learn distance Reiki and you learn the symbols and all these things. But one of the most important things is learning how to protect your own energy. That is so important. I'll tell you because I'm an empath. <laughs> it's, it's important. You got to know how to protect yourself. There's no question. There's Absolutely. No question about it. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I teach that and, and you know, there's so many other things. I teach meditation. I have a, also a, a online, um, it's not a course per se, but it is a meditation workbook as well as a, um, a guided meditation. Um, so meditation has been a huge part of my journey, mm -hmm. certainly a part of my awakeness and my beingness and my ability to be grounded and centered and focused and do the work that I do every day. Yeah. Um, so I, you know, meditation is one of those things that I highly recommend is just to everybody. Right. Um, so I, I teach a guided meditation, but I teach what I call a progressive relaxation, which is so important because most of us don't know how to relax and be in our bodies. Right. Just relax and chill out. Don't know how <laughs> and, to not, and not think. Just sit down and don't think. Right. <laughs> and so when I teach you, when I take you through this relaxation, you learn what it's like to really feel like being in your body. And so you know mm -hmm. when you're in harmony and then you feel the difference when you're out of harmony. Got it. And this is so important because then what happens is once you know when you're out of harmony, I teach you what you can do to get back into harmony mm -hmm. and you can do that on your own. Right, right. Oh, that's powerful. That's, that's amazing. So yeah, a lot of what I do, it really is about empowering my client, is about empowering my students because ultimately, you know, I'm here just like everybody says a God. I love what I do. I love coaching. I love counseling. I love, you know, performing Reiki. I love speaking and teaching and doing all these things. But ultimately, I want you to have the tools that you need so you really can live fully and live life on your own terms. Right. And, and I think that that's what's so important and that's what's missing is that that so many of us, we know we're not in harmony. We know we're not happy. We're not at peace, but we just don't know what to do and where to go. Right. And that's where you come in. That's absolutely amazing. Yes. Awesome. Well, Eva Laura, thank you so much for coming on and sharing your experience and your expertise and what you're doing to help raise the consciousness with your clients and people in the world in general because you're helping to raise the consciousness and raise the vibration on the planet. So thank you so much for doing what you do and coming on. Thank you. you. Know, I, I tell people like, once you know who you are, it's yeah. all you can do.
Right. You know, there, there, there's nothing else that I can do now that I am very clear and I know who I am. The right. only thing that I walk and live in purpose. Yes. So important. So important. So thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much for tuning in to Awakening with Katina Love. Namaste.